Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about Reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I wanna to talk to you about getting a PhD without your prior research experience and whether you actually need research experience to do a doctorate. So if you don't know me, I'm an associate professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship and I created this whole Reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There are so many people that helped me out that I want to pay the favor forward and help you out as much as I possibly can. All right, so do you actually need um, research experience during your PhD or before you actually start your, your doctorate journey? No, you don't need research experience, but it's highly recommended if you have research experience. So when I pulled the reciprocity community, um, small sample again, those of you who have research experience, um, know all about the, the sort of problems of having a small sample and sample selection bias, all that kind of stuff. So um, so a small sample of N of, of 27, and I asked this question, prior to applying for a PhD programs, did you have research experience at a university? 63% um, said they had research experience, and 37% said they had no research experience. So that means that 40%, roughly about 40%, don't have research experience, and I think that's pretty normal in terms of applying to a doctoral program. Um, so why do you actually need research experience before joining a PhD program? So there, there's a couple of reasons. The first one is selection. Um, what is gonna happen, and it's the same sort of reason why people choose the careers that their parents um, would cho choose, is that if you're not exposed to experience, research experience, if you're not exposed to opportunities, you're just not likely to choose that particular job that is research oriented. So if nobody in your life um, has said, this is the thing that I'm interested in, or have you tried to go into research, or if you haven't tried research, um, you're just unlikely to know that that is a possibility in your life. This is the reason why, and I think this is the major reason why, um, you know, that their careers are hereditary. Um, the why people that grow up in, in small town communities don't end up doing something, um, you know, something else in their life outside of that small town community. So um, to give you an example of this, when I was doing my high school, um, I just applied to chemical engineering and I got into a chemical engineering program at, at Waterloo, which is, you know, uh, one of the best schools in Canada for engineering. And um, when I got there, somebody told me about that they were an actuarial scientist. I was like, what the heck is that? I'm um, growing up in a small town. I've never met anybody that did that. That was only kind of a big city sort of job. Um, so I was like, I just didn't even know that that was a possibility. And you're gonna have those experiences as well. So that selection effect is really important. If you've been exposed to it before, you're likely to be um, going in that particular direction in the future just because you know that that exists out there outside of your current domain. Um, the second thing is requirements. So a lot of PhD programs are just going to outright uh, require you to have PhD research experience or have research experience before you go. Um, so in, in what it is here, it's not it's kind of arbitrary, to be honest, um, and it really just depends on you know, what they're looking for uh, at doctoral programs is, I, do you know what it's about? And um, do you have a sense of what research is about? So, you know, this YouTube channel hopefully is going to help you with sort of getting the, the feel of what we're trying to do and what we actually do. Um, but, you know, a lot of fields, it's just, it's going to be uncommon to do any sort of researchy kind of thing. So if you go into a PhD in management, a PhD in finance, um, and you've done a, you know, an MBA route, for example, right? and you've just done sort of practitioner kind of stuff, it's really unlikely that you're going to do research. So I actually did that because, you know, being an engineer, you actually can find a lot of research jobs. But, you know, a lot of um, MBA sort of directories and routes, they just are not going to do research routes. You know, there's sales, there's, um, you know, uh, executive sort of roles in a company, all that kind of stuff. You're not going to sit down and sort of do a lot of research and you're not going to be exposed to that. So you're just not going to have that experience. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for, what a lot of people look for with research experience in terms of that is, is just that you ex you're exposed, you know, kind of the ups and downs, the hills and valleys and all that kind of stuff and that you're just kind of mature enough to realize that it is a journey and you have to drive the bus. 
um, and that you are okay with driving the bus because the last thing we want you to do, um, any academic wants you to do, is to join them, join the bus, get three years in and realize, oh crap, I don't like this bus ride. Um, and then, um, you know, there's been a tremendous amount of investment that's been put into you and you've put into a lot of investment and then you feel pressured to stay and you don't really like it. Um, it's better to know up front whether you actually want to do this. And, and that's why I would, I would highly recommend um, for you to do some sort of research thing. So if you haven't got it, um, you know, try to do something in your organization that you're currently at. Uh, to get some sort of research experience, go talk to different researchers, go talk to university professors, actually meet with them. Um, you know, one sort of simple trick that works really well is just uh, send somebody that you like in terms of, you know, the research that you like, just send them and say, you know, um, I'm, I'm willing to give, or give you some support and uh, willing to do odd jobs for you for a couple hours a week. Um, you know, would you be willing to do this for, or would you be, do you have any odd jobs for me to do? And you don't have to be at the university to do that, right? And, and often, you know, different researchers will, um, you know, send you something or say, go read this or go do that. And, and that's going to give you some experience of what it's like. And, um, you know, on the, and the, the plus side, it kind of gives you direction on what to do next. So that's really important. Um, now, do you, is it going to help you with your PhD application? Absolutely. If you have research experience, it's going to help you out a lot. Um, you're more likely to be taken seriously as a candidate than if you don't have research experience. It's just what it is um, because of all those different factors, right? So what counts as research experience? Uh, so often it could be wide ranging, but really what you're looking for is you know somebody that's worked in maybe a lab or done some in-depth paper writing they write wrote a really cool research report um, or they've spent you know maybe it's a month or two or a couple months or, or 10 years um, whatever it is working on something that is kind of research related in whether in, in your organization your firm um, or you know just working at a university or whatnot and you just kind of want to get that so a lot of universities have these undergraduate research um, assistantships that's what I did uh, it was really good I learned a lot about what research was it wasn't really all that um, you know I wasn't good <laughs> at that moment but you know I learned um, about things and so you can look for that it's called the URA undergraduate research uh, assistant really useful most universities will have that check that out sometimes you get paid I got paid um, at my university, sometimes they pay them as well. So check that out. Um, you know, what is the, the, the other thing is that what it's going to do is help you sort out why you actually want to do a PhD. So um, for most of us, uh, myself included, you do a PhD because you're looking for these other external things like status, um, you know, making more money, higher wages, all those kind of things, which is totally normal. And that's like, I mean, that's how you make a career decision, right? Like all those kind of things. But what you should be looking for instead, a PhD is kind of weird, that um, you should be looking for things that you truly want to study and you truly want to be, that you're interested in, right? So if you're interested in polymers, well, go study polymers, plastic. Um, you know, if you're interested in how people work, well, then go study what people do and work. And then, and then what's going to happen to you is as you're doing this, you're going to start taking a deeper and deeper dive and figuring out what you truly like. Um, and it's going to just make your life a lot easier when you jump into a PhD program or doctoral program when you have this research experience. So check that out. Um, I'd highly encourage you to do it. It's going to make your life easier. It's also going to help you sort out a lot of different things along the way before you actually go and do it and waste your time and waste your, you know, waste years of your life. And that's the last thing that we want, all of us um, want you to do is to waste years of your life. That's why I love co-op programs. I love the sort of exposure that you can get um, and look for ways that you can do this yourself and to get research experience in different ways. So um, you could be that one, the, that 63% that actually had research experience before they went into a PhD program. It's gonna help your life out rather than the 40% that just didn't really know what they were doing. Um, that's tricky, right? When you, if you don't know what you're doing and you jump into it, you're like, oh boy, <laughs> good luck. Um, so so don't, don't do that. Just actually go in and be the 63% um, where you've actually had experience and go get that experience, go find it. 
be creative. Go out there and actually discover that research experience. There's lots of it out there. You can do this um, and I, I highly recommend it. So give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.